Right. Good afternoon, everyone. I am just waiting to be brought in on um, as co-host, and I can share my screen, and then I'll be able to make a start on the presentation. Shall I start with the intro? Yeah, I think so, Sue. Thank you. Right, I'll start it now. One moment. Hello, everybody. And welcome to today's webinar, which is hosted by MTD expert, Rebecca Bennyworth. At Landlord Vision, we are seeing more and more inquiries about making tax digital, how it will affect landlords and how Landlord Vision handles MTD as well. So this webinar is to address those questions. A couple of announcements before I hand over to Rebecca. We are recording the webinar and it will be shared with everyone later this week by email. It is a video recording and you will be able to see a copy of the slides. The other point is about questions. Rebecca will be answering a number of questions at the end, but as we've had over a thousand people register for this webinar, we will not be able to answer everyone's. I will now hand over to Rebecca. Thank you very much, Sue. Um, and hopefully I can now share my screen. Sue, if you can make me co-host, I'll be able to put the slides up um, and start um, the webinar. I wasn't aware Roy was supposed to do this. Heck. Right, I'm going to Okay, Rebecca. Super. Right, let's go. Super job. Right, here we are. Okay, welcome everyone um, to uh, Making Tax Digital for Landlords, uh, which I'm presenting for Landlord Vision. I'll uh, just give you a, a very, very quick bit of background on me. I am uh, a chartered accountant. I'm a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. Uh, I am a tax specialist. And um, I think the relevant uh, information to you, I've got my own practice of uh, uh, clients in Gloucestershire, but the relevant information to you is that as well as being uh, an accountant in practice, I also work on a voluntary basis with HMRC on the Making Tax Digital project. And I've been involved in the project uh, pretty much since it started, since about January 2016 so i'm coming up to uh seven years working on the project and still uh it's not quite here uh but hopefully we are uh, getting ever nearer and we will have this project in place uh before too long so um this morning or this afternoon i should say uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to spend about 40 minutes all together um and giving you an idea of what making tax digital means to landlords uh, and what they're going to have to do to comply and taking a few of your questions uh, before I hand over uh, and we get a demonstration of what landlord vision can do in terms of meeting those obligations. So uh, I have a little timetable for what I'm going to talk about in the next 40 minutes or so. So there are a number of, of sort of quite technical bits of information to get across. Um, and one of those is the digital start date. So what I'm going to explain what that is, how you know what it is for you and what it means, why it's relevant, why it's important. Then having identified when you'll be starting doing MTD, uh, I'll then talk about what MTD involves. What What is it? What do you have to do? Um, and then I'll deal with the three main elements of MTD. That is digital record keeping. What does that look like? What do you have to have in digital form? What doesn't need to be in digital form? Quarterly updates, which is a key part of the new legislation. And then the final bit of the new legislation is the end of period statement. 
and I'll explain how you will need to comply, how you can comply with all of these and what you need to do. OK, so we're going to start with a digital start date It's a little bit of a technical term. But the reason I wanted to start with that is it tells you when we're kicking off. So I would imagine that most of the people on here are already either landlords or accountants with landlords. So um, most of you are going to come into MTD immediately MTD starts. The digital start date is the date, the date from which you have to comply with your digital obligations and making tax digital places certain obligations on you. Those are the digital obligations and the digital start date is for you the day you have to start doing that. Now, essentially, I can summarize the digital obligations uh, by saying you need to keep digital records and you need to make some submissions. We'll go into a little bit more detail in that in a minute. Um, but therefore, your digital start date is the day you need to start with your digital records. Now, digital start dates um, are on the 6th of April in a tax year. OK, so everybody who comes into MTD will actually come in on a 6th of April. It might be 24, it might be 25, it might be 26. It depends on their actual circumstances. Um, one of the important things is for people who are new to being a landlord, and that may not be people listening, but you may have friends or colleagues who start up at some point in the future letting property, it is not their very, very first year of being a landlord. What the legislation does is it gives you a little bit of time to sort of get set up and then to find out that you've got to do things, digital records, and then it imposes that obligation on you. Having said that, certainly within my own practice, I will be recommending to new clients that they start keeping digital records straight away, um, even if they don't actually make submissions, because what I have found is digital records make uh, preparing the tax return much easier. Uh, they stop landlords from forgetting to charge certain expenses because they haven't keep, kept a proper record of it. And they just all around make life much easier and much more organized. So that's what the digital start date is. And what is your digital start date? Well, if you're listening as an existing landlord and if you continue being a landlord for a few more years, then um, you will be the first in on the 6th of April 2024. That's the start date of making tax digital. Now, so Actually, the trigger is, although if I uh, just scribble with my pen, although the start date is 6 4 24, you will come in on that date if on the 5th of April 23, so just over three months from now, well, pretty much four months from now, if you are an existing landlord on that date, you will come in from 24. Now, what that means is, as I've already alluded to, if you only start being a landlord a bit later on, let's say in the summer of 2023, then you will not come in in 2024. You will come in in 2025. And one or two may well not come in until 2026 if they start very, very late in the year. So everybody who's listening who remains a landlord at the 5th of April, so it says immediately before, well, immediately before the 6th of April is actually the 5th of April, 23. If you are still a landlord on the 5th of April, 2023, you will come in with the start of MTD on the 6th of April, 2024. From that day, you will have certain digital obligations that you must meet. And there are penalties if you don't meet those obligations. Although we do expect that HMRC may well not impose penalties in year one. We haven't got an announcement on that. We'll wait and see. 
but I would expect no penalties for the first year to give people time to adjust to the new system. Okay, so your digital start date is really important because it tells you when you've got to start keeping digital records and when you're going to come within the quarterly updates and so on and so forth. Okay, now combined with that, really important is the income exemption. And the income exemption is £10,000. So although you come within um, uh, MTD from the 6th of April 2024, you may not actually have obligations because your income is below the limit. Now, this is quite confusing. Lots of people get very confused about the income exemption. The income exemption is about your gross income, not your profit. So it is the amount of rent. If you also receive, um, let's say, a, um, a premium for a lease or something like that, which is more common in commercial letting, you will have to add that in as well. So it is your gross income as per your tax return. So um, if I just go back a slide now if you're coming in from the 6th of april 2024 the figures that determine whether you start that date work like this find a digital start date there it is okay now walk backwards in time until you get to the 31st of january so that will be the 31st of january 2024 now, look at the tax return for which that was the latest filing date. Might have been filed earlier on in the year. Look at the tax return for which that was the filing date and look on there and see what were the gross income figures on that tax return. If you focus on it's what's on the tax return, you will come out with the right answer. So you're going to go to the property income pages and you're going to add together gross income from a furnished holiday lets and gross income from uh your ordinary let from your residential or your commercial letting okay so it's the last tax return filed before the tax return you're thinking about and you are looking at ten thousand pounds now for people who do their own tax returns and don't use an accountant here are some important points to remember if you receive your rent via uh, an agent who collects the rent for you and pays it on, you must go up to the top figure, the rent before agent commission. So you need to add back your agent commission. You should be showing the total rent before commission and then you show the commission as an expense. In the same way as if you've got a furnished holiday let that's being handled by, uh, let's say, um uh, holiday cottages uh, uk then you need to add back their charges and get back to the total amount that you have received for lettings before the charges of the operator that is your gross income figure now if the property is jointly owned then you will actually only include your share which actually is what you put on the tax return. So let's take uh, a little example for you. Uh, you have a flat which is let, and the rent is, um, let's say, £3,000 per month. So the total rent on that property is £36,000, but actually there are four joint owners you and three siblings and so therefore your share of the rent that appears on your tax return is nine thousand pounds and that is each owner and therefore although the total income from the flat is thirty six thousand none of them have got mtd responsibilities so step one find your start date step two look at the tax return filed 
before that date, the last tax return filed before that date. And if you're late filing, then look at that one, even though you're late. OK, the tax return that should have been filed on the 31st of January and have a look at the total income figure. Now, that then leads us to a slight complication, because if you've got rent a room income, you're renting out a room in your own home, you have a lodger, then you may not be declaring that income on the tax return because there is a box. And it says, if your income is rent a room and you are below the limit, put a tick in the box. Don't write anything else. OK, that's fine. That rental income will be excluded. So say you own the property outright. And um, the rent you receive is £500 a month, which is £6,000. And let's say you have got gross rents of, let's say, £9,000. 800 pounds okay you will not this won't be on the return instead of that being on the return it will just be a tick and in that case you're below the 10,000 you don't come into MTD so after the 5th of April next year because that's your base year for the income starting in 24 it'll be the return filed in january 24 that's the 22 23 tax year you'll be able to work out whether you're over or under once you're ready to do your tax return so the income exemption follows on from the digital start date and the two of those combined tell you whether you are in um, and having to do um, the uh, obligations. OK, all right. Now, I know there are quite a few questions piling up, but what I'm going to do is deliver the content and then I'll go back and take as many questions as I have in the time uh, available. Now, I've got a few people raising their hand. I can't see you, I'm afraid. So uh, perhaps one of the other uh, people on the webinar as a, as a co-host can uh, find out what uh, your issue is if you have got an issue uh, just pop it in the uh, in the chat or the Q&A uh, and um, I'm sure somebody will be able to help you all right okay so now we've decided whether we're in or not let's have a look at what we've got to do so the um, MTD obligations there are three of them three is a good number to remember because three crop, crops up a couple of times so the mtd obligations there are three things you've got to do number one keep digital records number two make quarterly submissions number three make an end of period statement and for each of these i'm going to explain what is involved in each aspect of this three things you have to do under making tax digital keep digital records make quarterly submissions make an end of period statement okay and i'm going to go through those in more detail now you need to meet the obligations from your digital start date assuming you're over the ten thousand pounds either until you no longer have any property income or if your gross rents fall below 10,000 for three years in a row. So let me explain this. You will only come into MTD once your income for this purpose goes above 10,000. Once you're in, you will stay in. If in one year your income falls below, you don't drop out. You stay in because what HMRC didn't want was in, out, in, out, shake it all about. What they wanted was people to have certainty, to know clearly what it is they're supposed to do. And therefore, what they've said is, if you have three consecutive years where you're below, you can then leave making tax digital. You will not have to do quarterly updates anymore. OK, so once you're in, you're in unless you've got three years below. Three things you have to do keep digital records make quarterly submissions and submit an end of period statement okay let's move on what are the digital record keeping requirements 
The requirement is to start having digital records from your digital start date until the business ceases or you drop out of MTD. They are records of the transactions made in the course of a property business. Each transaction. A transaction would be the receipt of rent by either you or your agent. Each receipt of rent. Not if they pay you quarterly, you'll lob it all in as one figure, but each receipt of rent and each deduction for um, agent fees. So actually, the receipt of net rent is two transactions, the total amount of rent and the expense of your agent fees. The date of the transaction. Um, you will normally record these when they hit your bank account, but you have to be a little bit careful if your agent sits on the money because you should be recognising it when you when it's paid to your agent. Your agent is in law is you. I know you haven't got the money in your bank account, but in law, because they're your agent, they are acting on your behalf. And then finally, the category into which the transaction falls. You have to have three, remember three, you have to have three bits of information about each transaction. What is the date? What is the amount? And then what is it? Is it rent coming in? Is it a repair, an expense going out? Is it electricity bill in the communal park because you've got um, uh, a uh, multi multiple occupancy dwelling? So what is the nature of the transaction is it rent coming in is it an expense going out is it agent fees is it advertising for new tenants okay so all of the transactions of the property business need to go into these digital records and if you haven't already got those transactions going into a separate bank account now is a really good time to do that it doesn't have to be a business account it can be a personal account but now is a really good time to get those transactions in a separate bank account because that's going to make recording them so much easier. You are not then wading through your household Tesco bill or your uh, Sky subscription or Netflix or Waitrose or whatever. You're not wading all the way through all that thinking, I know it's here somewhere. They're actually segregated. So they're much, much easier to identify. Three bits of information, the date, the amount, and the category. How often do you need to do this? Well, you don't need to do it every day. You don't even need to do it every week, but you must do it at least quarterly, because when you come to submit your quarterly update, it must have all the transactions on. So quarterly, you will make sure that you've got all of your records up to date and then you will make the submission, which we're coming to any second now. So the submission must include all of the property income, UK property income that you receive and all expenses. So if you've got a commercial let and a residential let and a furnished holiday let, you're going to have to bring all of that together to make your quarterly submission. So the quarterly submissions, it is simply the total of all of the categories that I've referred to recorded in the digital records for the relevant period. So each category will be totaled up and just the totals will go to HMRC, not the individual transactions, just the totals for the quarter. Now, if later you find out you made a mistake and you missed out an expense, you will have to go back and resubmit that quarter. There are no penalties if you get it wrong, but you will need to have four complete quarters of transactions in order to move on to the final stage of MTD. Now, the quarterly um, updates run according to the tax year. So from the 6th of April to the 5th of July and so on. And then you get a month to submit it. So in that month between the 5th of July and the 4th of August, you're going to be getting your records up to date, making sure that everything's in there and then making your submission. Obviously, you can submit early if you want to. OK, so. 
um, there are your four quarters for the year. Now, in fact, lots of software doesn't like the 5th of April and the 5th of July. So from 23-4, from when we get into uh, making tax digital, you will be able to use the 31st of March, the 30th of June, the 30th of September and the 31st of December as your quarters, rather than using that 5th of April, 5th of July dates. You'll have the same submission date, 5th of August. So you'll actually get a month and five days if you want to, to submit the information. Now, what will happen is that when you get to the 31st of March in a year, then um, although you submit up to there, these odd five days, the tax year is still 5th of April, that five days go on to the next year. OK, so don't miss them out. They have to go in, but they'll go in in the following year. OK, now there will be penalties for late submissions. So you need to be aware that you've got to get organised and you've got to get on it. Um, there will be penalty points, a bit like your driving licence. There'll be penalty points and then there will be actual financial penalties if you are late. You start doing your updates from the digital start date. So if you come in on the 6th of April 24, then your first update will be till the 30th of June or 5th of July 24. And that will be filed by the 5th of August 24. You will, if you're going away on holiday, be able to send an update in before the end of the quarter. But you will have to make a declaration. There aren't going to be any more transactions in that quarter. So if the rent is going to come after you're going on holiday, then you'll need to log in while you're away on the beach and make your submission from there. OK, so we've got digital records. We've got um, quarterly updates. And now the final bit of the three digital records, quarterly updates, end of period statement which I will now call the EOPS because it's a much quicker thing to say. Now, the end of period statement brings together the whole year. It is the equivalent and it has got the same information on as currently you put on the tax return on the property pages. So you're, if you're doing your own return or if your accountant's doing your return for you, you are used to a bit of the tax return having property income on, that will be the EOPS. OK, so it will be all of the income and expenditure for the year and any tax adjustments that are necessary. And this one does have penalties if it's wrong. So the quarterlies, no penalties if they're wrong and you make a muck up of it. Doesn't matter. You've got to put it right at some point, but it doesn't matter. But the EOPS, like the tax return, you have a declaration that says this is correct and complete to the best of my knowledge and belief. And if you are wrong and you don't tell the truth, then you can get a penalty and obviously you will have to pay any extra tax. OK, so those are the elements. So very quick refresh for you. Uh, you have your digital start date and then you look at your 10,000 pound limit okay and then after that you have three things you have to do digital records quarterly updates and your end of period statement. If you have an accountant, they're pretty likely to do that. And they might also do that. But using the Landlord Vision software, you are going to be able to comply without assistance if you want to. The digital records also have three things in them. The amount, the date, and the category and the category is things like rent repairs agent commission and so on so there's a little summary of what you've got to do i've got a little bit of time left 
I can now tackle the questions and I might need to scribble. So let me get the questions up and start um, uh, with this. Kenneth said, does the start date include the tax return for 22-23, which is due in April 24? Kenneth, the tax return for the tax year 2022-23 that is due to be filed by the 31st of January 24. The digital start date of 6th of April 24 is therefore after that return's been filed. And that return will tell you whether you are under or over your £10,000. Now, one thing I didn't say earlier, which I need to say now, is if you are also self-employed, you will add your rent and your self-employment. You will add those two together to do your £10,000 test. Now, Alka asks, have I got a different start date if my business is um, incorporated? Uh, and the answer to that is limited companies are not affected by MTD. It's called mtd and they call it for it's a income tax self-assessment if your rental profits are in a limited company and you therefore pay corporation tax on them then this does not affect you it's only uh, unincorporated landlords okay um Harsh Shadows asks, is there a threshold of yearly rent below which MTD does not apply? Harsh I went through the £10,000, so hopefully I've already answered that. Uh, Sheila said, I start on 26th of April 22. Will I come in on 5-4-23? Sheila, nobody comes in before 6 4 Nobody comes in before that date. But because you are already going on 5423, because you're already going now, that means you will come in on 6424. So that is the start date for MTD as a whole. Uh, Mark said, does the gross income include salary? No, Mark. The gross income is only from what they call the mandated income types. And the mandated income types are self-employment not partnership self-employment and income from property although let me make clear it is both uk and overseas income from property and that is where the ten thousand pound limit applies but you must take the figures from the tax return so that you are identifying what HMRC uh, are, are looking at, because they will send notices out based on the last tax return filed. Uh, Louise said, the annoying thing is you cannot get gross, a gross statement from Airbnb, so all you get is the income after fees. Um, Louise, I knew you'd ask me a technical question. Um, yeah, now then, I haven't got any Airbnbers, um, but I... I think probably um, people know what their advertised rent is and therefore your clients will have to tell you what their advertised rent is so you know what the fee, the gross fee is. Um, good point. Didn't know that. Um, uh, and yeah, immensely frustrating. Kim. The statutory date for rental income has always been the 5th of April. For MTD, will we be allowed to use period ended March? OK, Kim, let me explain to you what's happened. In the Finance Act 2022, there is a section called the Late Accounting Date Rules. And it applies to self-employment as well as property income. And what it says is this. In spite of the fact that the year-end tax year end is 5th of April. If you prepare accounts to the 31st of March or the 1st, 2nd, 3rd or 4th of April, 
what this legislation does is it automatically you don't apply it does it it takes all of the extra transactions including the fifth obviously and it parks them on the 6th of april and that comes into force when mtd comes in so you may know they were thinking about shall we change the year the tax year end change it back to march that proved far too complicated but they've sort of gone about it the other way and they've said oh look let's pretend all that lot happened on the 6th so in the first year of mtd although it comes in on the 6th of april 24 if you did your accounts the 31st of march you must include that five days um if mtd is for landlords and property how is my pension handled it will be reported to hmrc kenneth but it will be done in a different way not through mtd okay you'll probably i mean actually what they'll do is they will know what your pension is because if it's state pension or paid by a, a pension company they will have that information and they will therefore ask you to confirm that it's correct so everything's changing from 24. if the rent a room is above the limit do you include the gross or the difference Praddy? what you do if let's assume that you are a, a hundred percent owner of the property and your rental income on a lodger in your home is nine thousand pounds okay although the amount that's exempt is seven five what you have to do is put the full amount on the tax return show the nine thousand and then further down it says and enter the exempt amount because obviously if you're a joint owner it's far so um you will that's how so if you go over the gross amount shows if you're under it doesn't um okay um Karine, does section 24 rules apply to foreign rental property income mortgage interest is allowed 100 percent in the foreign country uh yeah so kareem if it's a residential let then your residential finance charges are disallowed whether it is uk or foreign so you must never ever pick up the figure off a foreign tax return because different rules will apply you need to go back to the base transactions and what i hope i've shown you kareem is actually what you need to do is you need the transactions not just the totals the transactions on your foreign let have got to go in okay i've got a few more minutes before i need to hand back um if i don't make the income threshold can i still return by mtd yes you can go in voluntarily and you will not get a penalty if you're late will compatible software be provided free by hmrc kenneth no it won't no it won't some uh, commercial companies may provide free software but no hmrc are not going to provide it is foreign property income included alan yes it is it is included what will happen with section 17 i think shiver you mean form 17 99 percent one five percent other well that's not 100 is it so maybe you meant 95 so you meant 95 percent to one owner and five percent to the other owner okay um and if you've got twenty five thousand pounds worth of rent uh then hang on twenty five thousand uh, uh one ten percent is two and a half so that's one two fifty so this person would not be in and this person would be in shiver uh wayne i've got one property over gross 10 and a property joint ownership which is under 10 yes you add them both together uh wayne so wayne for you it's you personally have got more than ten thousand and if you personally have got more than ten thousand then so you've got 10 you've got whatever this one is and half of that one you're over 10 yes it will cover all of it uh is the fourth quarter submission and end period submission the same or are both required they're not the same because the fourth quarter is just the fourth quarter it's not cumulative just the fourth quarter and then then the end uh of uh year is all of it 
Anne said, are there other incomes included in the property MTD tax return? No. No. Um, when do you need to make the end statement? I am sorry, I didn't say that. Your end of period statement is due on the 31st of January after the tax year. So it is the same date as the current tax return. Kenneth is despairing. Don't despair, Kenneth. There is a digital exclusion. It sounds a little bit like you're going to be digitally excluded. Having said that, if you do a spreadsheet, you can do it if you want to, but you can apply for digital exclusion when it comes in and um, you won't have to do MTD at all. Soon said what happens about um, uh, accruals and prepayments. You do those on the end of period statement, uh, Sue. But remember that for property income, uh, the cash basis is the default. Uh, can you group your expenses or are they classified as per tax return? The classification is going to be the same as to the tax return. OK. Um, uh, Landlord Vision guys, do you want to come in now or shall I go on for five more minutes? You can do another five if you want. OK, I'll do five more <laughs> and then I'll knock it on the head. OK. No worries. Mark said, is MTD from April 24 a requirement if you've incorporated your property business? No, it isn't, Mark. Limited companies not affected by uh, MTD. Calpa said, what about overseas property income? Do we include? Yes, we do, Calpa. And the record keeping thing is going to be quite a burden. Are my bank statements considered digital records as all the information is there? OK. If you download your bank statements, from the bank and you have like a spreadsheet that is a digital record you will have to add the category you'll have the amount and the date but you'll have to add the categories and then you will you you'll have to use something to be able to send that to hmrc you can't email the spreadsheet so you will use what's called bridging software but yes in principle that's going to work i have two properties do i record transaction against each one no um, they're both together under UK property, provided, Paul, that one of them isn't let to your son. If it's let to a connected person, then you need to segregate it. Uh, I have privately owned properties and properties owned by a limited company. Limited company, out. Don't include it. Nothing to do with it. Only your privately owned stuff. Uh, do we play the tax quarterly too? Stephen, not yet. Um, I think it'll take them years to get around to that. It'll come. It'll come eventually, but not yet. Robert asked, do you think HMRC will enforce the penalties from 2024? Do I think leniency in the first year? Robert, they would be insane to introduce a change this big and go straight for penalties. They won't announce it until it's just about to start, but no way. If your gross income is less than 10K, are you exempt from MTD? You are indeed, but you would need to keep an eye on your income. I have one property in my name and one co-owned with my wife, 50-50. Right, Michael, great question. So Michael has got property A and Michael and his wife have property B. Now, so Michael and wife. Michael, you will have these transactions will go into your records 100%. And then each transaction from that one, you will put 50% in yours and your wife will put 50% in hers. And at the moment, that's what the law says. Now, I will say that lots of people are saying, no, that's stupid. That's stupid because every single transaction has got to be recorded twice. Or if you've got four owners, four times. So there is a really strong lobby saying, wait a minute, where are properties joint let? Let's just do one lot, one lot of records, one lot of submissions. And when we make the submissions, we'll say it's 50 50 or it's 75 25, whatever. OK, so at the moment, Michael, you will keep records of all of one and half the other. But that might change 
I don't know. I don't know if HMRC can switch now that they're this far ahead, but that is something that's getting a lot of uh, criticism. Um, do we start paying income tax quarterly? No, we don't yet. No, and not for a while. EOPS, are they independent or the four quarterly figures added together? So they are the four quarters added together, but then you might have some adjustments. So you might have to, um, you might be able to claim capital allowances. Let's say it's a furnished holiday let, then you might be able to claim capital allowances. So it's based on the four, but then any tax adjustments that you would normally do on your tax return go into the EOPS. Um, if you make a mistake on a quarterly return, should you correct it and how do you do that? Or should you simply wait until the EOPS and correct it there? Well, apparently HMRC want the quarters corrected and you can do that at any time. But similar to what I've said about joint letting, you know, there is an argument to say, oh, look, let's just do the four and then let's put it all right when we do the EOPS. I think then not really going to know. Once the EOPS is done, then you're there. Um, can I recommend suitable software that can handle MTD? Well, this is being presented by Landlord Vision. They have landlord software and it will be MTD compliant. So let's uh, put that there. Now then, you're asking them faster than I'm answering them because I've still got 97 and I've answered 39. Um, I will do two more and then I will hand over. Uh, gross income is less than 85k. You can record all your expense in one box. Will that continue? Yes, it will, Mark. Yes, I didn't talk about it because I thought it might be a bit beyond a lot of people listening. MTD for, is it for property only? No, it is also for self-employment. Not limited companies, not partnerships at the moment, but it is for self-employment. So if you're a self-employed plumber, you will be going into MTD and the obligations are exactly the same. Um, right. OK. Um, Damon, last question and then I'm going to. Um, oh, I'll do Alex's. Uh, if I have other expenses I include on my self-assessment, do they go in via MTD? No, they don't. They will not be part of MTD, Damon. They will still go in, but not via this process and i'm gonna quickly answer alex because alex rather hopefully said um can the uh, ten thousand apply to a quarter and not the whole year no alex it's an annual limit and sanjay said can we use a spreadsheet for digital records yes you can but what am i going to do uh i am now going to hand back to the guys uh from um uh, landlord vision except to say to jk jk you can do it on a spreadsheet but you can't upload the spreadsheet you will need what's called bridging software to enable you to submit right i'm going to put the questions out of the way i've still got 93 but let me go back to you guys and i'll, I'll put up a what oh you, I, I need to stop sharing so that you can share if we got time at the end um i'll answer some more but let's hand back to you Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, it was all very interesting and informative. I certainly I learned a few things. Uh, now then, I just need to take the host. <clears throat> so let me just give me three seconds. So my name's Roy. Uh, I work for Landlord Vision and I head up the Landlord Vision Support Help Desk. And um, <clears throat> I deal with uh, sort of various questions and I help with um, supporting the software and I'm just going to do a very quick presentation of just what Landlord Vision does and how it can support uh, what you're trying to do and how to how it deals with uh, MTD and some of the questions that you've been talking about and I am sharing the long screen So um, it's quite interesting. There's uh, questions people are asking about uh, ownership and shared ownership, um, and Landlord Vision uh, covers that and it will allow you to submit your data to HMRC uh, in that way. So what we can do 
is we can set up portfolios uh, within Landlord Vision. And I've got a portfolio here, it's got two landlords. And if I query this, I can see that I've got landlord um, ownership percentages. Um, my name is Landlord Vision, by the way, uh, at 80%. And 20%. So I've got say, two properties, and we only want an 80 20 basis. And the software will take the income and expenses into account and will apportion 80% of them to this landlord and 20% to this landlord. Now, um, as was mentioned before, somebody said that they owned all of one property and half of another one. So what we can do is we can set up properties and we can define ownership percentages within those properties. So if I go into my property, I've got this property and I own this one on a 70-30 basis with my landlord. Or I could say that I own 100% and the other person owns zero. And again, it will override, this number here will override what I've got in the portfolio. And I'll use that instead. And, and then I could go on and I can raise expenses and I can add an expense. And let's say, I don't know, I've, I've been to B&Q and I've, I've got various things that are going on uh, amongst my properties. And I want to um, purchase different things for different properties, but all on the same bill. So I could say, well, I'm going to have um, purchased one thing, say I put something for £10 against this property, and I can add another line and I can add something else for a different property. So I've got that flexibility in there, and I can assign these to different accounts. Um, if I'm going to choose one of these, I'm going to say that this was um, furnishings, and this one was, I don't know, printing will do. So you can, you've got that flexibility that you can, you, even on the same bill, you can assign different properties and different uh, accounts. And these will, again, if this one was half owned, it would assign half of this £10, part of this £10 to one landlord and part to the other. And we can do the same with receipts. If you have physical receipts, you can upload those to the software. The software reads them, scans them, pulls out the information. And again, you can generate an expense straight off that uh, information. It just populates that field for you. And again, all we need to do is just assign the categories uh, as required. Um, just something quickly before we move on to the next bit. Uh, if I go back to the top, I can also add in users. So if you have, um, you want to get your partner on uh, to look at it as well, uh, I can invite on a user and I can invite those by email. User access is by email address. So as so long as each user has their own separate email address, they'll be able to be logged in at the same time. And depending on who that user is, uh, you can also restrict their access. So if you don't want them to have access to certain information, or if you don't want, they don't need to see uh, a whole portfolio, you can switch those off if needs be. Jumping back to the portfolio. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We can also set up our rents and record those, and then we can reconcile a bank account. So when people talk about bank statements, you can take your bank statements, you can import them into Landlord Vision. Uh, and in fact, you can even, depending on who you bank with, you can set up a live bank feed. So you can feed those transactions directly into the software um, and reconcile them and record them that way. So you see I've got some uh, transactions here that I've been importing takes me to the reconcile page and then landlord vision reads your bank statement or reads the feed of information that's been passed in and then they all appear in this column and then it will attempt to match those up with any incomes expenses payments payment schedule items anything that's already been added to the software and you can see those on here and all we need to do is just click on these to reconcile them if they are correct and you can search for them if they're not Correct, or you can even add the expense. So you can just build up your tax report straight off your um, your bank statement. You can also add journals as well. So if your accountant just wants to add some extra tweaks, uh, we can record those uh, journals uh, in here too. 
and just quickly some reports uh, I've got three reports these are my tax reports we've got the capital gains report um, which will work. Um, so you can tell it when the software is purchased what it's purchased for and also um, when it was sold or your valuation data and you can run a report which I've not set up and if you've got um, on your expenses you there's an option where you can set up uh, the fees um, to purchase costs capital costs and selling costs and you can assign those and they all appear on the capital gains report more importantly we've also got the tax report again you can choose your tax year which you're running the, the thing for obviously you're looking at more sort of 24 25 but i've got a year this is the last year i had data for this will run for your current systems choose your owner so this is where it takes those ownership percentages we were assigning into account i can choose so i'm going to run the account the report for mr landlord vision who owns 80 percent of the portfolio and 70 percent of that property that we looked at choosing cash basis and accruals and accruals unfortunately click on apply and it takes that income and expense data and it breaks it down as per the numbered boxes on the self-assessment tax return form and shows you what you need to fill in for each box so we can see all of the rents uh, in box 20 all your incomes and then it breaks them down rents and insurances legal and management fees got uh, total expenses taxable profit for the year and we've got a breakdown of the tax bands and of course the final income tax bill at the bottom and the final thing I want to show you, well, to discuss about, is we also have uh, an MTD for income tax uh, report as well. Um, we're currently building this. It'll be ready once HMRC go live with the system, as we were talking about before. Rebecca's again giving you all the dates. And I just want to quickly say that uh, in order for Land of Vision to connect and do any submissions to the HMRC, uh, it uses your national insurance number and you should authorize the link between LV and HMRC using your HMRC gateway credentials. Once authorization is granted, LV will be able to access various details about your self employment business, UK property business, and foreign property business. Landlord Vision is presently only interacting with the UK property business information and can retrieve, add, and modify any periodic and annual submissions of property income and expenditure. LV also allows you to review all of the final aggregate self-assessment information you have submitted to HMRC, which is derived not only from submissions for property business transactions, but also submissions from any other sources and software packages, and then submit a final declaration that all your data is provided and finalised the tax year. And that is it uh, from me. Thank you, Roy. Um, I have a series of several questions I could ask you, but I think you've actually covered it all in your I think I have actually short but <laughs> sweet <laughs> presentation. Uh, we've actually only got a couple of minutes left. Um, I think we've probably run out of time now with the questions, Rebecca and Roy. So yeah. I, I'd like to I thank you right for joining to us today. And hopefully this has gone somewhere to answering your questions about MTD. And if anyone would like to learn more about Landlord Vision, and who wouldn't, we <laughs> will be holding a full demonstration on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. You can, I think you've got just a little time, Rebecca, to answer maybe one more question. Yeah. Um, let's just, um, right, I will... Um, I'll just pick out a couple. Um, so still people asking, does it apply to companies? No, it doesn't. Somebody has said, what's to stop you submitting estimates every quarter and then a correct submission from number five? Rich, the trouble is you're actually breaching the law because the, the law requires you to 
keep digital records if you make numbers up and send them in then you haven't kept digital records and therefore uh you are potentially risking a penalty of up to three thousand pounds um grace has said we need to use special software yes you do grace um landlord vision is one option there are other products and you will be able to use spreadsheets if you want to um uh Excel spreadsheet is a digital record, but you will have to have something uh, that will enable you to um, uh, will enable you to submit. A couple of questions about partnerships. Strictly letting is not a partnership, but partnerships don't come in um, for at least another uh, another year. Um, Alex pension no it doesn't go in the rental income calculation um I think um that's probably enough somebody said do we need to submit scans or pictures of receipts no you don't they can be kept on paper James said does 10k include interest and dividends no it's purely the mandated income types um your self-employed income is separate you will make separate submissions but actually um that um the when i said about adding self-employed your self-employed income goes towards your total of ten thousand pounds i think um if i finish with s ahmed who said what about llps llps will not carry uh, not come in um, at least until 2025. Now, I don't know whether you guys um, want to try and download the remaining questions. I, I don't know how you would do that, uh, but it sounds like you might want to do another quick Q&A session. Uh, there will be a recording of the webinar, uh, but we're well over time now. We're, we're gone past the two o'clock time. So I'm going to hand back to sue and say thank you very much for joining us thank you very much rebecca it was most informative and it has covered a, an awful lot in such a short time and yes there are a lot of questions and we will try and work out how to download them and perhaps um get them answered at a, at a later date don't forget everybody there is another full demo of the software on thursday morning at 10 a.m the link is in the chat I'd like to thank everybody for attending, for Rebecca for doing her presentation, for Roy for his presentation, and I'd like to wish you all a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye.